So what you should be doing with your PhD interview is be focused on the researcher, right? So what do I mean by that? Um, you should be intellectually curious about the researcher's interests, right? So whoever you're going to interview with, you want to think about what they are currently working on um, and maybe read some of their articles. In fact, not maybe, you probably should read a couple of their articles or papers that you, they've recently written in the last little bit, um, or maybe the ones that they're famous for, and read those particular papers. And it doesn't have to be many, it has to be, you know, maybe it's, um, you know, one to three papers of theirs or one to five papers of theirs, right? Just kind of have a sense of what they are trying to do and what they are about. And then once you do that, um, you kind of understand what they are, um, you know, what they're doing and, and really trying to understand what, what it is that they are interested in. And so what you're trying to sort of do is build a connection with them, right? So, and, and this is kind of the cool thing with science is, you know, in the real world, <laughs> whatever that is. So in the real world, it's really hard to build a connection with somebody because you have to, I mean, you bump into somebody that's random. You don't understand who, what they're about and, you know, what their interests are and stuff like that. But in science and in, you know, the social sciences and stuff, we typically research things that we're interested in, right? So if you, if somebody's written something about it, then you can easily build a conversation based on the thing that they're interested in, right? So if you find out that uh, researchers interested in AIDS, you know, or have they written stuff about AIDS or the AIDS epidemic? Well, heck, ask them about AIDS, right? Like that all of a sudden, and you know what? People are gonna just go crazy about this, right? In terms of opening up and it's very flattering. So this is why I want you to read the articles. It's very flattering when somebody's actually read your articles um, and they say, you know, I read your article on this and I thought it was really cool. Um, and then they say, you know, and, and then here's what I would sort of think about or, you know, carry on the conversation is I read your article on this, right? So I study learning from failure um, or organizational learning from failure. That's one thing and innovation is another thing that I study. And, you know, if somebody read the articles and they said, well, that's really cool and that's a really insightful thing, but have you thought about applying your, your paper in this particular way um, or in this particular context, right? So you're thinking about, you know, how can you actually apply this stuff and you, you sort of, you know, repeat and think about, you know, I read your article and I thought it was very interesting. This was a really cool insight, but did you think about in this sort of way or applied in this sort of way? Um, and then the other thing that you could do is, you know, you can ask about, look, okay, well, how come you studied it here in this context or this thing? And how come you didn't apply it in this thing over here? This could have been really interesting too. Um, you know, for whatever it is, right? So maybe, you know, I looked at medical device adverse events in, in one of my, in a couple of my papers. Well, then somebody could have said, well, how come you can't, you know, look at recalls or, um, you know, whatever, right? Like, and, and how come you can't apply it in those particular areas? And I would say, well, yeah, you know what? I, I know that. Um, that's something that I would, I would love to do. And this sounds like a really interesting research idea that you could work on, right? So all of a sudden you've built this connection and then people are like, oh, that's cool. You know, I really like what you're doing. And they, and the researcher, they're flattered, right? So that's the first thing they're flattered because you actually read it. And then the second thing they're like, this person is kind of interesting because they are interested in some of the stuff that I'm interested in, right? So it's a little bit of a trick in terms of getting it engaged. And then the other thing, when you read other people's papers, you're like, well, crap, I don't like what they're doing and I might not do that and I might not find it interesting to go to this particular program. Well, I'm gonna go someplace else. And so you get you get this sort of insight before you actually jump into what they're actually going to do. Um, you know, the other thing that you could do in this sort of second technique, what you could do is go into talking to somebody and say, this is, uh, you know, I'm really interested in X. Have you ever thought about doing research in this particular thing or whatever it is? And, you know, often I will be a little bit more standoffish and I, I imagine lots of people are because a lot of us, we just don't understand what that X is, right? Like what it is you're interested in. So if somebody told me, I'm really interested in studying the AIDS epidemic in Africa, um, you know, or, you know, the, the decrease of the AIDS epidemic in Africa. Well, I would love to, I think it's interesting, but I just don't know that much about it um, at this moment. And so it's gonna be a little bit more distant for me to do that. And so it's gonna be up to you as the young scholar, the young person that's going through this 
to sort of help inform me what it is that you're interested in with this. And that's going to be a trickier thing, but you can do that, especially if you're a chatty person, right? So chatty people have an advantage uh, with this. And I know that because I'm not chatty normally. Um, and so it's, it's easier when you actually have this conversation, you open up, um, if you can open, you know, you can have an open conversation and, and then you can sort of get people to, you know, engage and stuff. So in, in the trick is, is to be focused on the researcher and focused on asking questions um, of the researcher as much as you can. And, and that's, that's going to help out a lot because then that gets everybody talking um, a little bit more. Um, so the other thing is that uh, what you should be focused on with the researcher, and, and I've said this in a couple of other videos, is make them look really good um, in whatever way that you're trying to make them look good, right? So it's, you're trying to flatter them and, um, you know, what you're trying to do is engage them and, and sort of give them, you know, you're, you're, what you're trying to do is uh, build relationship, build rapport, right? So you ask them questions about what they're trying to do and see if they can, you know, see if you can help them in, in whatever way, right? And that's the focus is always sort of trying to help them become a better researcher, um, you know, engage as much as you can with whatever it is that they're interested in, right? So, um, you know, you could, you could even say when you come in, um, you know, think about the things that you are curious about and this, this is, so people that are intellectually curious, they like to jump on problems and like, like to help people out. And so you can go in right, right away and you're saying, you know, I'm really puzzling over this one thing. I saw this when I was working here or I was in school here and I saw people behave in this kind of way. Or I saw, you know, like this weird, curious um, empirical phenomenon that's happening. I really can't explain it with anything that I've thought about. And I'm just curious about this. Can you, do you have core courses that are offered on this? Can you help me out with sort of explaining this? And so a good researcher is gonna pop up and say, well, hey, you know what, that is really weird. I've never thought about that. And maybe you, you can use this particular theory or this particular insight, which is inevitably gonna be something that they know. So the researcher or the, the professor that you're talking to, they know they're gonna say, well, look at it from this lens. Maybe you're going to, oops, um, maybe you're going to see something that's different, right? And and then you're going to look into that particular lens and they're going to find out that you're intellectually curious, you're, you're just excited about doing these different things. Um, so that's what I would think about. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, what you should probably be thinking about um, is look to see how you can engage somebody that's curious and kind of nerdy, right? So that's what you're trying to do is build this relationship, this rapport with somebody that's that's engaged and, and nerdy and that they want to go um, and go in a certain way and, and just solve problems. So every researcher I know, every professor that I know, it's just, they're just curious about the world and they are just asking weird questions about the world. And it doesn't I mean, there's often, no real reason why we ask these things we just justify them after and we say that it was important to do this for x y and z but we're just you know as human beings as as the type of people that we're wired we're just kind of curious and we're like okay well this is interesting and so if you can get that to the point where you're asking questions um about things that are interesting and curious right so you saw this thing that's happening in your workplace and i don't understand why that is can you help me out on that um, you know, really focusing on these different problems and puzzles, that's going to be a lot more engaging than just kind of asking generic questions about, you know, what is your school like? Or, you know, what is the tuition? Like? You know, just really generic things that I honestly, um, you know, as somebody that's a researcher, um, I could not care less about a lot of that kind of stuff. And, and it's important. I know that. Um, but at the same time, I could not care less. I'm more curious about the puzzle that you're trying to solve in the puzzle that I'm trying to solve. And then the other thing is I would love for people to make me look better. Um, and, you know, as a researcher, I, and I'm, I'm being upfront about this, and most people are not going to say that. Um, but yeah, if you can make me look better, and you can, you know, start doing really cool research on something and I am helping you out with that. 
goodness gracious, you know, that's awesome um, because then everybody wins, right? And, and that's what we're looking for. Most PhD programs, um, most researchers around the world, that's what they're going to be looking for. Somebody like that, that is going to take their, you know, the, the PhD students that they're, they're working with and it's going to take it to the next level and do things that are really cool and amazing that, that you would never have thought about doing on your own. So if you can do that, ask a lot of questions about research questions. In fact, when you go to conferences and you talk to other researchers, so the sort of research group, you know, nerdy folks, um, when we ask each other, that's like the first question. It's like, how are you? It's like, what are you working on? Um, has nothing to do with, you know, um, you know, you know, sort of the, the, the day to day stuff, that stuff comes after. And, you know, that's when all the gossip comes and, and the fun stuff. But, you know, that stuff comes after. But the, the first question is, what are you working on? What are you interested in at this moment? Uh, and, and that's okay. That's, that's the language that we like to, to sort of work in. And that's the way that we expect a really smart, astute PhD student to be doing, right? So that's how I would prepare for a PhD interview. Read other, the articles. So if you're going on an interview, read the articles of the different researchers. Um, it doesn't have to be many, one or two, just spend a little bit of time doing that. You don't have to spend a lot of time doing it. You, I recognize that you're not going to understand a lot of it, but just kind of get a sense of what they're trying to do. Even if you just read the first couple of pages, get a sense of what you're trying to, what they're trying to do of each article. Um, and then, you know, after that, you start thinking about, okay, how can I start asking questions? What is it that they're working on? Then I can build bridges and ask questions about those kind of things that they're working on. And how can I help that particular person? Right. So you're thinking about how can I help you, the researcher, um, in terms of making them look better and to flatter them. And I'm serious, it works. Uh, it's going to work for you. And, and, you know, as soon as you get your mindset around that, it's not about you. It's never about you as, as the individual, as a candidate, right? It's, it's about the researcher. Um, and then the other thing, so here's the other thing that happens when you do this that you forget about is that you are in the driver's seat then, right? So you're asking all the questions that are really important about what is going on um, at the school when you're doing that, right? So if you get like the deadpan look, um, you know, when you ask a question, right, if the researcher just stares at you, dude, don't go there. Um, that's not going to help you out in any sort of way. Or, you know, you get the kind of the, the nasty sneer, um, you know, and you get that, you know, like that kind of look. At, don't go there. That's not going to be, you're going to hate it. Um, and, and you're just, you know, that person is not interested in what you're doing. And so you have to acknowledge it, right? Like it's, you just have to acknowledge that that is going to be the case with some people. And, you know, some people are just not nice people. Um, and so if you go to that environment, well, expect it to be like that every single day. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, that's, that's just kind of reality. But anyways, hopefully these questions help you out in terms of preparing for your PhD interview.